Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. If you're new, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell so you can stay up to date every time I post a new video. So today's video is going to be um, a commissioned officer training essentials video. I've had a lot of people send me messages in the direct message um, of Instagram asking me everything there is to know about officer training. Some of you guys have reached out to me and told me that you guys have been accepted. So first and foremost, congratulations. Um, I know one particular individual reached out to me and said that they're going to be going to officer training in January. So congratulations to you as well. So this video is just going to be you know, kind of like a packing list or just a video just to kind of help you be more prepared for COT, just to give you kind of like the 411 on what to get ahead of time, what, what items that you'll need, like what's beneficial, what's really not beneficial, like what you should get ahead of time, what you can kind of wait to get while you're there sort of thing. So like I said, if you guys are interested in seeing the rest of this video, then please keep watching. So first and foremost, at some point in time, you will receive a uniform checklist, male uniform checklist or female uniform checklist. At some point in time, um, most likely it will be, if not from your recruiter, it will be in your cot welcome pack. So um, that will usually come maybe like a month or a week before you actually get to caught or it will come the day of end processing. It kind of varies. So within that there will be a uniform checklist. Everything on that uniform checklist you need. Now I make the exception by saying on the uniform checklist you will see mess dress. I personally did not purchase my mess dress. Tons of people in my caught class did not purchase their mess dress. So that's kind of ambiguous. I'm not going to discuss the mess dress issue. Um, so we won't discuss anything about the mess dress. I'm just going to talk to you guys about packing essentials. So first and foremost, I want to say when it comes to being prepped and ready for a cot, you want to have as much money as you possibly can. And I know everybody's finances are different. So personally, I would say at least try to have about $2,000 to $2,500 saved. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, why do I need to have that much money? Let me tell you, uniforms are expensive. And the easy pay car that I talked about in my previous video, I'll link that in the card section, that's only $400 and that will go by very, very quickly. So touching on the money issue that you need for your uniforms, if and I say if you are at all possible able to get your uniforms before you go to cot, that will make your life so much simpler. So personally, I was able to go to my local um, military base and I was able to get on base before I even had access because my brother's military. So he took me on base. A lot of people um, I heard got on base through their recruiter or their sponsor, like they were nice enough to take them on base. So if you're able to get on base any kind of way you can, please guys, try to get your uniform um, at least two sets. So like a full set. So the ABU top and the pants and one good pair of boots. Try to get that ahead of time. Um, and then maybe like a couple like PT clothes or something ahead of time as well. Um, and if you can, even though it might be a stretch, try to get your dress blues ahead of time as well. Personally, for me, the only thing I got ahead of time was two pairs of ABU uniforms, boots, ABU hat, and some PT gear. I waited till I got to cot to get my dress blues. My issue with that was it's very expensive. There's tons of people at cot, and I feel like we we're all kind of pushed through like cattle. So I don't feel like my dress blues fit me properly. So I feel like I paid for something in alterations that really didn't fit me the best that it should. So now I'm spending more money for more alterations, but that's neither here nor there. So if you can get your uniforms ahead of time, it is very, very helpful. Trust me, trust me. Cause the day that they take you to the shop at, it is like a whirlwind. Like you have people trying to get 
everything. Like some people are not able to get stuff ahead of time and they're trying to get so much stuff it can be so overwhelming. That comes back to the money issue. If you can get um, enough money saved or if you even have a credit card or can apply for a credit card that would be very very helpful as well um, because you have your ABU uniforms, PT gear, your dress blues, you have to get every rank that you need, you have to get all of that sewn on, like there's so much stuff that you have to get. So, um, all of the little essentials like toothbrush, toothpaste, cosmetic items, all of that stuff, you guys can get that at the shop at. If you're flying, I would advise you guys like get that at the shop at when you get to caught. That way that's less stuff that you have to pack with you and like take with you while you're flying. You could just get that stuff at the shop at. When it comes to things like your towels, once again, you can get that at the shop at because you can bring your personal towel, but then when it comes to the point while you're at cot and they start doing room inspections, you can only have white towels. So then your personal towel that you may have brought from home that might be hot pink, okay, you can't use that now. So like I wouldn't even bring like my own towel. I would just buy a towel at the shop at. So personally for me, when I packed for cot, I brought one wheelie luggage, one book bag, and then one um, like tote bag. So I put everything in there. Um, I brought a printer, which turned out to be not very useful. So that was taking up extra storage space that I didn't need. I think I printed out maybe like 50 pages worth of stuff my whole time there. And it wasn't even stuff for me, it was stuff for people on my flight. So I wouldn't bring, um, I wouldn't bring a printer. I wouldn't bring any um, cleaning supplies because um, they have dorm inspections and you don't have to clean your dorm, but there is a storage closet inside the dormitory and there's tons of cleaning supplies that were left over from other flights and other cot classes and I know my cot class left a bunch of cleaning supplies as well. So I wouldn't worry about any of that stuff. A lot of things you can leave in your car as well if you're driving. So I left um, a bag full of civilian clothes in my car and then when we phased up and we were able to go to our car for like our privileges, then I would just go to my car and get stuff as well. So that's an option if you are driving. Um, another highly, highly, highly recommended item that you cannot go to COT without is a laptop. Make sure you have a very good, reliable laptop because like I talked about and like you guys saw in my vlogs, there is tons of lectures, tons of classwork, tons of like homework style things. So you really have to have some sort of laptop, some sort of tablet, something that you can do schoolwork on. So do not go to COT without a laptop or iPad, tablet, something that you can do schoolwork on. There is no technology center that you can go to, no library that you can go to, no computers that you can sign out to use the whole time that you're there, nothing. So please have a laptop, um, borrow a laptop if you have to. If you don't have one, you're gonna have to buy one, borrow one something, you have to go with a laptop. Um, shower shoes, those are very important. Unless you're just okay with walking around, you know, letting your feet touch nastiness, then don't. But shower shoes are essential. Um, so like I said, on this whole packing list, there's going to be a list of everything that you need. Um, and there's nothing that you can skip over, like I said, except for the portion that's going to say mess dress. That you'll have to work out with the instructors because they will coordinate that between what you're going to wear at graduation. Everything else you have to get because it correlates with what needs to be in your room for dorm inspection. So, like I said, the most important thing I can say to prepare you for cot, if you can, save as much money as possible, get your uniforms ahead of time, if you can, have a good reliable laptop tablet something that you can do schoolwork on to save yourself um like packing room if you're flying your toiletry items um unless it's like a specific so speaking for females and even males unless it's like a specific skincare product um acne medication something along those lines that you can't get from a regular store 
And then of course, by all means, bring that with you. And you can have medication, you can have a leave, Tylenol, all that stuff. But if it's like a deodorant, a toothpaste, all that kind of stuff, don't even pack that. Like you can get that at the shop at things like bug spray, lotion, body wash. Once again, you can get that at the shop at. So along with the issue of having funds, you want to have some cash as well, because like I said, uniforms and all of these items are going to be expensive. You're expected to have these things like literally expected. You can't hit them up with, oh, I didn't know I needed this because they're going to be like, oh, we gave you a welcome packet. There's a checklist. Why do you not have these items? So you have to have these items. You have to be expected to purchase these items at some point while you're there. Your very, very first day of in processing, you are expected to give over $40. At least I had to give over $40 straight off the gate for your MREs that were pre-purchased for you. And then another $60, I believe, something along those lines for your Camelback, which you guys saw in like some of my footage, the Camelback that we have to always keep, the hydration system, that's pre-purchased for you. You can keep that forever. Um, so you just pretty much have to repay them for that. So you have to have cash on hand for the very first day of end processing to pay for those items that were already pre-purchased upon your arrival. So upon arrival, you're going to get what's called the Otsman. So you're going to get the Otsman. Um, so it's pretty much the officer training school manual called Otsman for short. The Otsman is going to be your quote unquote Bible while you're there. Familiarize yourself with the Otsman. Sleep with the Otsman. Read the Otsman. Love the Otsman. Become one with the Otsman. You want to know why? Because in order for you to phase up when you have your first phase one evaluation, you will have to perform things that you are expected to know from the Otsman. So reporting procedures, how to do proper salutes, your warrior knowledge. So what's the Air Force core values, the Air Force mission, the OTS honor code. All that stuff is in the Otsman. So when they give you the Otsman on day one in processing, become one with the Otsman, guys. Like you think, you think I'm joking. When you are um, marching in formation, marching down the bomb run. So if you guys are going to caught, you'll figure out what all this means at some point. So you're marching in formation. You're marching down the bomb run so you can go to um, so you can go to the dining facility. They will stop you and they will pick out certain members of your flight and quiz you on the spot on stuff that's in the oddsman and they're grading you on criteria on your flight as a whole as to how well you know the material in the oddsman and that's how you go through and get awards and things like that so you have to know everything that's in the oddsman so that's part of how you prepare yourself there's an online version of the oddsman if you want to be that studious person who looks over it ahead of time not gonna lie I was that person I looked over it kind of skimmed it briefly ahead of time just to kind of familiarize myself with it so when I got the little book it wasn't all like brand new to me now did I start studying it ahead of time no I'm gonna be honest because I was like I have way too much stuff going on I will have five and a half weeks to study this but did I look over it ahead of time yes I did and I would advise you to do the same Okay, so another tidbit that I want to throw out there for you guys. When you get to COT and you go to the dining facility, the meals are super cheap, like literally breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I spent more, no more than like $3, maybe $4 for a meal. Breakfast was always the cheapest. I think I spent no more than like $1.50 or $1.75. So you can either always pay with cash or you can pay with your easy pay card. Your easy pay card only has $400. My personal suggestion would be if you can to always pay with cash and use your easy pay card along with whatever funds you have in the shop at to get the things that you need. Now you'll only get the easy pay card if you're going to caught in your active duty. That's the only people that will get the easy pay card. I'm sorry. So if you're going to caught and you're not active duty, you do not get the easy pay card. That's just how it works. So yeah, I just want you guys to be aware of that because I rolled up in the dying facility on, it was on day one. 
And I'm just so thankful that I had cash on me because I gave the girl the, my car and she's like, oh, we're cash only or easy pay. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I have cash because we didn't get our easy pay card till like four or five days later. So just a little FYI, have cash on you um, because you won't get your easy pay card on day one. Easy pay will come on like day four or five. And then for those that are coming to COT, if you have not already in-processed on your base and you have a CAT card, you won't get a CAT card at COT. That's something that they don't do. That was new to me because I was like, I need a CAT card, I need a CAT card, I need a CAT card. They're like, we don't give out CAT cards. So if you have not already in-processed with your base before going to COT, and you already have a cat card, like if you're a prior military, don't expect to go to COT and get your cat card because it won't happen. So, FYI. Another thing that's really good for you guys to keep, like personally, on your person at all times would be a little pair of scissors or like some nail clippers. So I personally kept these little pair of scissors on me at all times in one of my ABU pockets because the staff will call you out if you have strings hanging anywhere off your uniform. They're teaching you about professionalism. If you have any sort of strings hanging off of your uniform or anyone in your flight has little strings hanging off, they will dock you on that. So you really have to um, look yourself over, look your flight members over. Um, so a lot of times my flight members and I, we would all get to our flight room and before we would line up for formation, we would all like look each other over, like check me for strings, check my uniform, how do I look from head to toe. If anybody had any string, we were cutting using our scissors, our fingernail clippers, whatever the case would be. And we were cutting those strings off of one another. So definitely keep something like this in your pocket. Something else that was super, super handy that I personally ended up needing was a tie to go pen. So I was wearing my dress blues, I was wearing my shirt. I didn't know it, but I ended up having a little stain on my shirt. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in dress blues, I have a stain on my shirt. Thankfully, um, someone else that I was friends with had a tie to go pen. I was like, oh my God, you're a lifesaver. So then I went out and bought my own so I could carry my own around as well. So having a tie to go pen is very, very handy and helpful because you never know when you're gonna get a stain on your shirt. Um, there was a girl on our flight who ended up getting a lipstick stain on her dress blue top and she had a tie to go pen. She put it on there, yeah, it left a wet spot for a couple minutes, but then after it dried, like the stain was gone. So that's something that I would also recommend that you guys get. And like I said, you can get that at the shop at, but definitely get a tie to go pen because if you get a stain on your ABUs or on your dress blues, like it will be a lifesaver. So, um, like I said in some of my previous videos, anything that you bring as far as clothing that's civilian, um, if you're driving, I would recommend you leave as much stuff in your car as possible because as you phase up, you'll have the opportunity to go to your car and get stuff. Anything that you bring into the dorm that's civilian, um, have that lock so you can lock it in your security drawer. If not, there'll come, um, if not, there'll come a point in time where you'll have to take all of your luggage and put it in the luggage room and then you won't have access to it. So anything that's civilian-wise that you want to keep with you at all times, in your room have a lock so you can lock it in your security drawer if it's something that you want to bring to cot and you know you'll want it later but it's not necessarily important and you're driving then you know lock it up in your car that's my best advice there and also um on day one of in processing when you report to the air force base um, make sure you have a bunch of copies of your orders. I think I printed out literally like 20 copies of my orders because you constantly have people saying, I need a copy, I need a copy, I need a copy. And you don't want to be left without any copies. So tons of copies of your orders, copies of your social security card and um, identification, all of that. You want to have like a nice little folder, have everything neat and inside. So tons of copies of that. You want to dress nice and it doesn't have to be professional like business casual but a nice pair of blue jeans with no holes a nice shirt see something like this i'm just wearing for fun but i wouldn't wear this to like day one of in processing i'd wear a nice shirt nice pair of jeans 
a nice pair of tennis shoes because you will hit the ground running. Not literally running, but you will be doing a lot of walking. So ladies, don't wear sandals and don't wear heels. Seriously, just wear tennis shoes. Please tuck your lace. Please tuck your laces into your shoes because if your laces are not in your shoes, they will be yellow. They do try to yell at you on day one. What am I talking about? They try to yell at you all the time until you progress and then they try to become your friends later. But yeah, they will yell at you on day one. They will try to intimidate you. Um, don't show signs of weakness. Don't just, just keep telling yourself, okay, I'm here for a reason. I was selected. I'm not going to let this get to me. They can't put their hands on you. They can't do anything of that nature. It is all a mental mind game. But they do yell at you and they do try to intimidate you. They do do a lot of things. People have, people from my cot class, they did break. They were crying. But it's just all how you handle stress. And that's really what they are looking for. Um, so like I said, be strong. You will get through it. It will go by fast. It will be times where you will be so annoyed. You'll be like, what the freak am I doing? Like, why am I here? But it's really the people. Honestly, the best experience I had was meeting the people that I met, meeting the lifelong friends that I met. Like just, that's really what made the whole experience worth it. And I still communicate with people in my flight to this day. Like we still have the group chat that we created. Like we still talk on a regular basis. And that's really what made the whole thing worth it because everybody was in there going through the same thing, understanding the daily struggle. So really try to make that connection with people, whether they're in your flight or not, and just take every moment, take every opportunity, and just try not to let it get to you and just just do your best. That's really all I can say, guys. So this is not like a super in-depth video. I just want to talk to you guys about like cot essentials, kind of what you can expect and how to just try to be as best prepared as you can. Because I'm telling you, I had no idea what I was stepping into. I did not know what was going to happen. I honestly am just so thankful, first and foremost, to God and then to my brother and my parents because if it was not for them, I would not have had some of the stuff I had ahead of time. I would have been down there with like very little money. I can't tell you how many times I had to call my brother and be like, hey, I need this. Like, can you transfer some money into my account? And he was like, yeah, no problem, sis. And bam, like I had money. Like... I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm just so thankful because I just have that family that's there to always support me and I could not have done it by myself. So I just want to help to better prepare everybody that's watching that's going to caught and just to tell you if you can, like I don't know everybody's situation, but just please try to save as much as you can. Try to get as much stuff as you can. When you go to caught, you should not be put in a financial strain. You really shouldn't. But I'm not gonna lie, some people were because you don't even get paid while you're there. Um, if you're prior service, now a lot of times you will because your information's already in the system. But for a lot of us that weren't prior military, like they're so slow about getting your information to where it needs to go. Like when it comes like the first and the 15th, the time for you to get paid, a lot of people were not getting paid. A lot of people were put in such a hard predicament with family, wives, children, like all of that. Um, they were having to go talk to finance, like a lot of things were going on. And this is not to scare anybody, this is not to freak you out or anything, I'm just keeping it like 100% real. So I don't want people to go to caught and have to be put out financially. So just really keep that in mind. This is it, this is my video. I'm gonna wrap it up to show you guys how dedicated I am to my channel and to you guys and to getting these videos out. It is 11 o'clock and I'm filming this and not 11 a.m. either. It is 11 p.m. and I'm filming this for you guys. Leave me your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Reach out to me on social media. I try to stay engaged with you guys as much as I can. Like I said, I'm super busy. So if you send me a message and I don't respond right away, just give me some time. 
Thanks. Thank you guys for your continued support. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.